Hi, everybody. Welcome to week two of Inclusive Energy Access 101. My name is Sarah Murray. I'm a program manager at Mercy Corps, and I had the pleasure of helping put this course together, together with Dina, who you met last week, as well as our team members in Mercy Corps Uganda, Afghanistan, and Jordan offices, as well as our partner at the Women's Refugee Commission. So it was very, very fun to see all of you in the course last week. We have an incredibly diverse group of students from around the world, and I really enjoyed hearing about your specific energy access challenges and context where you're working. This week, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an introduction into inclusive energy assessments. We'll be going through some of the core concepts and some of the tools that I really hope you'll engage with and take into your work outside of this course. Inclusive energy assessments help us answer two questions. Energy to accomplish what and for whom? Energy assessments are so important because they are the basis for the design of our energy programs and energy interventions. But of course, your starting point will differ depending on your role within the humanitarian system. Sector specific and basic needs actors are going to be most concerned with how inclusive energy furthers your specific objectives. Perhaps you're interested most in shelter or education. Our energy focused learners are going to be mainly concerned with the best way to get energy from point A to point B and will be mostly focused on sustainable and holistic solutions. Our protection and gender learners will be most concerned about the impacts inclusive energy has on the safety and opportunities for marginalized groups. So those are three very different perspectives, but we're going to be introducing some best practices and some areas of inquiry that apply to all, that all humanitarians should be looking into and implementing throughout your programs. There are four key areas of inquiry that guide what we look at during inclusive energy assessments. These include gender, gender-based violence, energy systems, and markets. In addition to what we're looking at, we're also going to be discussing best practices of how we conduct these assessments. These are so important to keep in mind as we dive into sensitive issues around gender, gender-based violence, there are a lot of underlying power dynamics within communities and households when we dive into these issues. So we'll be carefully looking at how to listen to diverse voices, identify local capacities, ethically collect and use data, and employ participatory approaches. So how do we get started with inclusive energy assessments? There are three main steps. First, we'll help you define your focus area, again, depending on where you sit and what your specialty is. Then we'll find them, meaning we'll segment the community and the populations you're aiming to serve to make sure we're not leaving anyone behind in the process. Then we'll assess specific energy needs in the, in the context that you're working in. So what does step one entail? Defining the focus area. The mandate and focus of your institution or your project will guide this decision. For example, Food Security and Livelihoods Project may focus on energy needs in homes and businesses, whereas WASH or Camp Management focused agencies may focus on community-wide energy needs. Energy focus actors may look holistically at all energy needs in a given area. Once your focus area is clear, you will define who the distinct energy users are. As we've looked at and seen in the case studies, Back in week one, energy needs and priorities are always going to vary depending on an individual's identity. We know that sex, age, ability, and displacement status always matter. But what else might be key in your specific context? This example comes from the Population Council. They focus a lot on the needs of adolescent girls, and they found that issues and, and distinctions around school enrollment Early marriage and early motherhood are critical drivers of marginalization and can be really important ways to segment a community and identify those with specific needs. 
This is an example of segmentation that could be useful to understand energy needs and vulnerability in your context. In schools versus out of school girls, married versus unmarried girls, those distinctions are likely to identify very different energy needs, different daily routines, different risks. The last step is to plan and implement your assessment, where you'll look into the specific areas of inquiry, including current energy uses, needs and priorities, the risks related to energy access and use, energy access barriers, and the gender and social norms that condition access to and use of energy. We want to introduce a few concrete assessment tools that can be used to answer these questions and incorporate the principles of participation, inclusivity, and leveraging local capacity. All these tools are available in an annex of the Inclusive Energy Access Handbook. The focus group discussion tool uses participatory ranking methodology that stimulates discussion of energy needs among a group and asks them to rank both energy needs and risks faced by the community. Pictured here are some of the image cards we used in focus group discussions in Uganda. This tool helps you come up with ranked priorities and risks by population segment, which is really useful for inclusive program design. The survey bank includes questions that can be embedded into traditional household surveys while unpacking distinct energy needs by identity. The girl-led design tools empower girls to lead research and assessment processes, while photo voice puts affected community members in a documentary role, enabling them to tell the story of their energy needs from their own vantage point through photo and video. Finally, our market assessment tools help identify strengths and weaknesses of local energy systems, both on the supply side and on the end user side. They explore issues of market barriers, product preferences, and willingness to pay. We have a detailed suite of tools from a market assessment looking at solar lighting options in Uganda. This week, we'll be asking you to reflect on some inclusive energy assessment best practices and tools. I hope that you'll download some of these tools and really dig into them. I wanna hear from you this week. Would these tools reveal information that you don't currently have access to in your programs? How might you incorporate the tools and principles into your programs? And how would you use that information in your program designer implementation? Please let us know in the discussion forums this week. We'll also be asking you as part of our assignment this week to build your own assessment. So really digging in, figuring out which tools would work best in your context and what you would learn from that process. So please do join us in the discussion and activities this week so that we can hear from you on how these tools can be integrated into your work. Thank you for joining us and we are so excited to dig into inclusive energy assessments with you this week.